Evening everyone, how are we? I don't even know what day it is, I know it's Wednesday, I think that will make it the 14th of October, I'm John, this is going out on M's. Uh How's everybody doing, how's everybody's uh, day been? I've been busy working, uh, and that's sort of how it is. Work from home, I've been working from home since March, so we'll be coming up to nine months since the last step foot in front of the building. But I'm working, and that's something, so I'll take that. Um, today would have been the birthday of an old friend of mine, Stumpy, and he passed away 21 years ago, I believe it was. And so happy birthday to whoever you are, pal, that's for certain. Happy birthday to you. Now, following on from, uh, I'm going to have to do it again, uh, another post, please, 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 Go across to YouTube. We've started a new channel. It's Talk and Thrive. Stigma Fighters. And uh, we're going to be putting content up there. We have started putting content. We'll be putting these videos up. We'll be doing tailored content for YouTube. We just need to figure everything out. But please go over there. Please subscribe. And please press the... I think Jim says there's a bell or something. And you press the bell. Notification. <clears throat> notification happens and uh, you get told when we put things up there June hello how are you uh, for some reason I can't see who else is on but hello to everybody uh, as you know last week we did narcissism week across talk and thrive women and talk and thrive and Ems, and we are moving into domestic abuse be that physical or emotional now here's the thing what you may not know and what you may not be aware of is this. If you are a victim of domestic abuse, if you have been, if there is a non molestation order in place, if the CPS have prosecuted, you may be eligible for compensation. Now, you may be available for compensation and that will be based on the severity and it will also be assessed and it will range and it will range depending what it is, and that could be anywhere from two thousand to twenty thousand pounds. Now, Louise, who is part of Talk and Thrive Women, works from Ramsden's Solicitors. Uh, they do a no win, no fee basis, so there's no harm in going and speaking to them. Awards are definitely scaled, but if you are a victim, it's in your best interest to take a look. That's for certain. Uh, domestic abuse should never happen. You shouldn't ever feel you shouldn't ever feel worried that it's going to happen. It's just something that's wrong, completely and utterly wrong, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, but it does happen. And whilst a compensation award isn't going to change things, it might just help to uh, better things for you. It might help you do things you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. For example, you might be able to uh, you might be able to get a deposit for a house. You might be able to pay debts off. You might be able to do some things. Rashad's saying, uh, "Yeah, domestic violence is a huge problem yet ignored when it comes to men." Yeah, Rashad, you're absolutely right, mate. The statistics say it all. One in four women are affected by domestic violence. One in six men are affected by domestic violence. So it isn't just women who are affected by it. I believe as a man, I have to stand up and say domestic violence is wrong. And I believe any man who perpetuates that on either their male partner or their female partner, if they emotionally abuse their male partner or their female partner, they are cowards and it needs to stop. We need to be able to have strength of character. We need to be able to... Uh, We need to be able to talk and we need to be able to talk about this and we need to be able to stop this because there are people who have been through some of the most horrendous things I can imagine in the world. Uh, in you know, I've been through some horrendous things, but I've never been through domestic violence. I've never been through domestic abuse and it's wrong, absolutely wrong without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, you go home and you should be able to spend your time with your loved ones. You should, you know, you fall in love, you spend time with them and you spend time with somebody because they're who you thought that they were. And then at some point 
the abuse starts and it's all wrong. Absolutely all wrong. At some point, the police get involved and, you know, the cycle perpetuates. But at some point, we have to stand up and we have to say that abuse is wrong, be it domestic, be it physical or emotional, because it all leads to trauma. If trauma goes unchecked, if trauma goes unqualified, you're going to live your life as a shell of an individual, whether that's as a shell of a man or a shell of a woman. Uh, and you're right, Rashad, it is a genderless issue. It absolutely is. Uh, the reason I specify that it's wrong against men or it's wrong against women, it's just to be clear because a lot of people, you and I, see it as a genderless issue. We absolutely do. There's no question about that. It is a genderless issue. But a lot of people will believe that uh, domestic abuse only happens to uh, women. But it doesn't, it happens to men. So without a shadow of a doubt, domestic abuse is genderless. It's perpetuated by bullies, it's perpetuated by cowards, and it needs to stop. By the way, if you can, share this into as many groups as you can. We are looking to grow, we are looking to expand. Press that share button. Get yourself on YouTube, Talk and Thrive Stigma Fighters. Get us subscribed. You know, we wanted to grow, we've got ideas how we can grow, we've got things in place. Things take time, you know, it's taken us a year to get to where we are, but we're comfortable where we are. Uh, we're growing at a nice steady rate uh, and it's and it's good. It's We're really happy with how it's going. But the serious issues that we need to talk about, because when you're looking at domestic violence, whether, you, whether it's against males or whether it's against females, people are left with trauma. And when you're left with trauma, you are looking for red flags in future relationships that don't necessarily exist. So, for example, you may have been in a relationship and you may have had a horrendous experience with your partner cheating on you. So your new partner may have friends of the opposite sex or friends of the same sex. Again, I'm not, you know, domestic violence, emotional abuse. It happens whether it's a heterosexual, homosexual, lesbian relationship, it just happens. So you will look for those red flags and you may believe that those red flags are occurring and happening as you speak and as you live and they may not actually be there. And that is because domestic somebody, if you've been in a relationship where you've been domestically abused, you are going to believe that somebody is going to be carrying out the same behaviours and they might not actually have that in them whatsoever. Uh, it creates all sorts of problems and people don't deserve that. People don't deserve that for a second. People deserve to be able to live a life where they fall in love, where if they choose to live on their own, they deserve a life that they choose to live. And if they meet somebody and they decide that they are going to share their life with someone, they are going to be with somebody, they are going to look after somebody, they're going to take somebody into their home, the least you can expect is for trust, caring, decency, honesty, kindness, thoughtfulness. We should say here, when male victims ask for help, ring police to assist them. They get arrested themselves, even with evidence. Police turn a blind eye. This is so wrong and unjust. This is a huge problem. Uh, I think you and I at some point need a conversation, Rashad, because if this is... Uh, thanks, Adam. If this is something that is happening, we do need to shine a light on it, even if there is evidence, because if there's evidence, this is the difference, isn't it? When you call the police, it is traditionally a he said, she said situation, or a she said, she said situation, or a he said, he said situation. The way that you get around he said, he said, he said, she said, she said, he said, she said, or she said, he said, is by capturing evidence of some sort. Now, to capture evidence where domestic violence is concerned, you'd have to set up cameras because I imagine uh, going from when I was when through what I went through, I was I know that I was filmed. I know it happened, uh, but I, I can remember it happening in a way because I was put in strange positions, strange locations. And it's quite obvious that a camera had been set up looking back on things. Uh, <clears throat> No, I'm not happy about that. I'm quite angry about that, but there's not a lot I can do about it. There isn't anything that's going to change anything that I've been through, not for a second. So I imagine if people are setting up, you'd have to set up something similar to try and capture the uh, 
domestic abuse. And if the evidence isn't sufficient, there's something seriously wrong without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, there is something wrong because everybody deserves protecting. Protection is something that we should all take for granted because it's something that we should all deserve. Uh, so Adam's saying, I haven't. The Lancashire Police dealt with it. She denied it, then seen me and admitted it. You see, it's all wrong. Uh, yeah, I did very well there, Kev, thanks. I did, uh, <laughs> I did very well. I was trying to make sure you try and capture everything, don't you, when you're sort of saying things because things, subjects such as this, it impacts so many different uh, different people. It impacts, it's like Rashad said, it's genderless. Domestic abuse happens and it shouldn't be tolerated. You know, if somebody is carrying out behaviour that is abusive, I believe people can change. I really do believe people can change. But it's when it crosses a line. For me, the lines cross when something turns physical. Uh Yep, June's saying there that it doesn't have to be physical abuse, mental torture and emotional blackmail is also an issue. Yeah, absolutely, June. You see, the thing is, no matter what, from what I've been through, I haven't been in a relationship where I have been physically abused. I haven't been mentally tortured and I haven't been through emotional blackmail, but I learn quickly. I learn very quickly and it's clear that these things impact people in a huge way and... All I can do is highlight these things. I can highlight them and say that they're absolutely wrong because I've got a small platform. We've got Emps, we've got Talk and Thrive. We've got, again, YouTube chat, YouTube uh, plug. Go over to Talk and Thrive Stigma Fighters on YouTube. Please press subscribe. We do want to grow. We want to do podcasts over there. Uh, we've got things that we are wanting to do. We wanted to do different videos to this. But ultimately, the more subscribers that we get, the more likely we're able to go out and do live and interact like we do on here. Richard saying the system is broken and designed to prosecute and demonise men. Sadly, it's a fact. I agree with you. And it's that is a fact, Richard, because men in the past would have been uh, perpetuating these crimes. They aren't anymore. It's a genderless crime, and you're absolutely spot on there. It is a genderless crime perpetuated by both men and women, and it needs to stop. If you know somebody, or you are somebody who... Uh, is going through any form of abuse, reach out to us. If you feel you can't talk to anybody, drop us a line because one thing I guarantee you is confidentiality is a given. Now, we're not mental health experts. We are even medical health experts. We've just got experience of how to deal with this sort of thing. And we've got experience of how to deal with this sort of thing and we'll help you through it. There'll come a time where you will need proper professional support and we signpost you there and if you want us to support you whilst you're being signposted and whilst you're going through that that's what we're there for that's what peer support workers do <clears throat> we're not counsellors i'm considering getting qualified 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 isn't even a word you see i'd struggle wouldn't i <laughs> uh it's something that i am considering it's something that i'm considering doing because it's, you know, I'm 43 years old. Do I have more to offer than working as a risk analyst? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Do I want to do that? I don't know. I know I enjoy doing this. Would I enjoy seeing people get support and get help? Yes, I would. Absolutely. I would love to be able to do that. We have got uh, something coming up on a Sunday, which is kind of a big deal for us. We can't go into it yet because we haven't signed off on it. But once we can go into it, we will go into it. Here's, here's something that I'd like to put out. If any of you lot, have a story you want to tell about domestic abuse if somebody has been prosecuted and you want to come on here and you want to tell your story get in touch with me i'll happily talk to you about that that would be talking about anybody who's been through anything if you'd like to write something to us uh and make it very clear that it needs to be anonymous and anonymized We'll be happy to do that as well. We need to shine a light on it. We need to stand up and say it's wrong. It's wrong, not just because for the relationship that you're in, but there will come a time where you break free. And if it's like anything like the sexual abuse that I went through, it will feel uh, 
hey Emma, how are you? Hi Dawn, how are you? Uh, it will feel like you've got the biggest sense of relief in the whole world. It will, You'll feel relieved by it. But then... I imagine flashbacks start. I imagine the mental torture starts. I imagine the sleepless night will start. So therefore, domestic violence has a direct link. Domestic violence, be it emotional violence, physical violence, emotional abuse, physical abuse, however you want to call it. Uh, it's going to impact you and it's going to impact your mental health. If it's impacting you, reach out to us. We, I personally give you my word. We speak to you. We don't go anywhere if you don't want us to go anywhere. We will encourage you to try and seek help, but we will not force you to seek help and we would never do anything that you did not want to do. That is an absolute certainty. We would, we have got a duty of care. So if the situation is so bad uh, that other people's lives are at risk, Obviously, there's decisions that have to be taken. But if it's something that's just being handled between the two, if you talk to us about it and we'll help, we absolutely will. Uh, if you are an individual who is getting heightened by the thought of lockdown, where we live, I am on living in tier two. If you're in Liverpool, you're already on tier three. Now, if you are already, if your emotions are already heightened and you're at home and you are feeling like, Something's not feeling right. You are getting angrier than normal. If you're watching this and you, it, you're, at, you're beginning to act out a character or you're beginning to feel out a character, get in touch with us. Because if you're starting to act out of character and you're starting to feel that you could be acting out a character, uh, there's a strong possibility, I think, that you might start to fall into a trap of acting out on your frustration. That doesn't mean to say you would nef it would definitely turn into abuse. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is you would start to act in a way where your frustrations would impact the lives of those you love because you are not yourself. And that's where we need to talk. That's where peer support groups come in. Uh, if it wasn't for COVID, we'd be on about eight or nine groups now. We've currently got two that we're running. Uh, hopefully we can carry on running them in the meantime, but we are getting back to doing these videos. We are going to get our point across that way. I am going to look to utilise Zoom. I am going to look to utilise uh, Teams if I can, and I want to get people on and I want to do uh, I want to do groups on here. I'm happy to do one-on-one -on -one sessions with people if you like. I'm happy to do two-on-one -on -one sessions if you like. What I will say now is if you are a female, I would strongly like you to speak to a female if possible. If you send us a message, we will arrange all of that and we will give get somebody to get in touch with you. If you're a male, we will speak to you. We just think it's ethical. We just think there is an ethical uh, side of things to things. We feel that... Uh, it's how we run our groups. We believe the male groups are for males, the female groups are for females, and they need to be facilitated by the appropriate gender or sex, whichever terminology you want to use. Again, I'm not, uh, I'm not sort of questioning that. Long term, if you are, uh, if you are a, an individual who's a transgender individual, and I'm, I'm not trying to offend anyone. Please don't think I am. If you need support. We will provide you with that support, absolutely. We will not turn a single individual away without a shadow of a doubt. Everybody needs help. We are heading towards COVID wave two. I said an interesting thing about four or five months ago, and it was this. When the Nightingale hospitals were being built and people were knocking the fact that we'd spent time building these hospitals that apparently were empty and, you know, we could have put money into other things. I said something at the time to somebody and a few people have been able to say, yeah, you did actually say that. The Nightingale hospitals, for me, were not being built for spring. They were being built for the winter and they were being built for wave two. Wave two is where COVID is going to strike. Now, where people are going to get very confused is they believe COVID is kind of like a flu or a cold and it's nothing of the sort. I remember watching a Sky News documentary back in February, I think it was in Italy, Bergamo, and the doctors were there quite clearly saying it's a respiratory illness and the worst thing that you can think is it's a cold and a flu. Right now, uh, 
there's so many people suffering. I've been so, you know, you're looking at the numbers that have gone over numbers per 100,000 and it might not seem a lot, but exponentially COVID is on the rise. COVID is on the rise and I'm afraid it's going to be a very hard winter unless we get vaccines in and people can say what they want, but I'm not somebody who, I'm not somebody who comes down on the side of uh, COVID not being real and I don't come down on the COVID side of COVID not being real because I know somebody who's passed away. I know somebody, I'm aware of somebody who has contracted it twice and he's now in a pretty serious way. I am friends with somebody who thought he was going to die in the first wave and I remember speaking with him uh, and I didn't honestly know whether we'd message, speak, whatever, again. And he came through it, care, how are you? Uh, so I believe COVID is absolutely real. I suffer anxiety. Something happened to me a couple of times when I was being abused. It means I struggle having things put over my face. But I carry a mask with me. And if I can wear a mask, I absolutely will wear a mask. And I wear a mask because whilst I struggle, I'm now starting to think, what if people who are walking around wearing masks are frightened of this virus, truly frightened. If they're truly frightened by this virus, uh, and a mask, a piece of cloth, gives them a little bit of reassurance when they're out in Tesco's, Morrison's, Sainsbury's, Max and Spencer's, wherever that may be, should I make the effort? And I do try and make the effort. And I'd say 95% of the time I'm able to wear a mask and I do wear a mask. Uh, it's a very sad state of affairs that we're suffering now with COVID wave two. I find it completely <clears throat> strange that COVID wave two has happened within a time frame from when they allowed people to go abroad on holidays. I find that rather strange. Uh, I find the rule of six strange. I find having to go into a cafe with a mask on, but once you're in the cafe and sat down, you don't have to wear your mask, go to the toilet or leave, your mask doesn't have to go back on. I find these rules all sort of contradictory. So when to me, when you've got a set of contradictory rules, you're going to have a set of people who don't necessarily believe that COVID is a real thing. And that's an incredibly sad thing. I think we need to, it wasn't that long ago, we were out clapping the NHS on a Thursday night at eight o'clock because they were doing such a good job. I hope that we are able to maybe do something similar or, you know, remember the NHS when they are overwhelmed and they're overwhelmed both because of patients who need help because of things such as heart, heart disease, uh, cancer, and also those who will be going to Nightingale hospitals because of COVID. You know, it's going to be a difficult time. Now, I suppose I've gone well off track here about domestic abuse because I've stumbled into COVID, but it's quite simple. What we are looking at is trying to heighten awareness for domestic abuse. Narcissistic behaviour. We published that all over last week because there will be people in narcissistic relationships that don't realise that their partner is displaying narcissistic tendencies. So there is a lot of awareness that we need to put out. We need to make it aware that, you know, think how hor horrific it is. One in four domestic violence, one in four women suffer, one in six men suffer. That's atrocious, is that? That's two in ten. That means 20% of people, 20% of individuals suffer. That's wrong. It shouldn't happen. It should be 0%. It's because we don't talk about things. We don't talk about our frustrations because we've never been taught how to talk. We've never been taught at times that, you know, if I talk, how's somebody going to react? So I'm going to shout to get my point across. I'm going to punch to get my point across. That's not the right way. Not for anyone. It's wrong. It's, uh, it's hurtful. It's wrong. You know, you can only do what you can do. We want to, uh... yeah, of course I will, Emma. Uh, it's difficult because I don't believe people are born bad. I believe things happen and it turns them certain ways. And I believe 
when you try and get support for something and that isn't forthcoming, that can cloud your judgment for a long while. And it can cloud your judgment. Uh, but we're here, we're trying to make it okay to talk. We are stigma fighters. We are individuals who want to normalise the conversation around mental health. You're going to be hearing so much more offers of late, you know. We've got so much we want to say. We wing it a lot of the time. We don't know what we're going to talk about until I press record. Still, I don't know what I'm talking about as I'm talking right now, really. But I know I believe what I'm saying. And I've read what I'm saying. But I don't I don't structure it. There's no sort of bits of paper going out. I'll discuss this at minute five, minute ten, whatever that may be. But please, 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 if you can, go over to his YouTube channel. Because we really want to do... Uh, we want to do more things. We want to do more lives over there. We want to do lives here. We will continue doing lives here. We've got over 2,000 members now in this community. That's amazing. In less than a week, we are up at 22 subscribers on our YouTube channel. That's pretty good going. You know, it's slowly, it's steady, but we'd like more. If you get chance, go over to YouTube. Please log into YouTube. It's If you don't know how to log into YouTube, it's the same as your Google account. Log in. Press that subscribe button, press the bell to receive notifications and watch us grow. Some of the things that I'm thinking of doing is because we want to go out and we're wanting to raise money. So I'm contemplating busking. Do I do do I do like a busking set at home or something like that? Because clearly you can't go out at the moment just to try and raise money, see if it's possible to raise money. It's trying to do things just to raise awareness to people. It really is. Uh we have so many things that we want to do. The Sunday night thing is going to be huge, really huge. Uh, and I can't wait to talk more in detail about that because that's blown, blown me and Jim away. It really has that we've got something in place that's... Uh, what's the YouTube channel called? Funny you should say that, Emma. It's called Talk and Thrive Stigma Fighters. And it's got a picture of me and him on in front of the uh, West Yorkshire Police Building. You'll see a lot of content that you've already seen, but that's because we're adding currently. We will start putting new uh, things on there. We'll be doing bite-sized videos on there. Maybe five minutes into something, we will do a bit of research on something. And then we'll talk about something for five minutes. Uh, because we believe that, you know, your bite-sized videos, you're going to get more engagement for that. Because it's something that can people can drop in and drop out of. The videos that we do here, we do very well. We have, there's two on Facebook, there's two sorts of uh, metrics that you look at. You look at those numbers you've reached and those who've viewed the whole thing. We do very well. It shows people drop in and drop out. So what we're trying to learn is what we what people want to talk want us to talk about. So if you're ever wanting us to cover a particular subject, get in touch with us. Get in touch with us and we will absolutely talk about these things. Uh for now, I'm going to bid farewell until tomorrow. I'll be back about five o'clock tomorrow, maybe half five, I don't know. Uh, if, Like I've said earlier, <clears throat> we're not professionals. We don't claim to be. Never have done, never will do. But what we do do is we use our experience to help others. We will talk to you, we will support you. But when you need professional and medical help, we will signpost you and we will point you in the right direction. We ain't going to leave you. Not for a second. We aren't just going to do half a job. We'll do a full job and support you. What we do here, we do off his own state. We do off his own back. It comes out of his own pockets. We run everything uh, self-sufficient. And we do that because we believe in what we're doing. We'd like to thank you for taking your time to watch some of it, all of it, watching us live, watching it later, whenever it may be. It means the world to us. Uh, it really does. It just it just does. So, you know, just as again, if you suffered domestic violence, domestic abuse, if you've been awarded a non-molestation order because somebody's been impacting you, if the CPS have prosecuted you, you may be entitled to compensation. Louise Blackwell, who works for who works with us as part of Talking Thrive Women, works for Ramsden Solicitors they will happily look at your case. Awards are scaled, but you could get between two and 20,000. They work on a no win, no fee basis. So there isn't an upfront cost. 
it isn't going to harm you to go speak to them. That's for certain. Compensation will not right the wrongs of what you've been through, but it might just help you to be able to do something, something that you wouldn't otherwise have been able to do. If you see somebody struggling and they know they're struggling and they don't know where to turn to, show them out, point them our way, point them to our videos, let them have a look. They, they may look at us and they may think, you know, these, these guys are relatable, but what are they like in real life? Well, anybody who knows us knows that what you see is what you get with me. I'm like Ron Seal. What you, it's on the tin. I'm ginger. Sometimes I have a beard. Sometimes I don't have a beard. But I'm always decent. I'm always honest. You'll always get a straight down the line answer. Uh, if you think you're struggling, get in touch with us. Reach out to us. Let us know when would be a good time to call or get in touch with you. Because we don't want to put you in a position where you might be in trouble or you might be not, it might be awkward for you to speak. Look after yourselves and look after each other. There's nothing more important. We have one life. We want to live it. We should be living it with a smile on our faces. We should be living it uh, knowing that we're safe and well. I want to take the time as again, just always, just thank you for supporting us. We've grown significantly over the last 12 months. <clears throat> we really want to grow now. Uh, I'm going to keep mentioning YouTube till it goes, till you're all sick of it or until you've all subscribed. Your choice, YouTube, Talk and Thrive, Stigma Fighters, subscribe. Uh, we're only doing it because we want to grow and we want to do new things. We want to do podcasts. We want to do uh, different sorts of videos, but we want to grow. And we want to get our message across in as many ways possible. Uh, I want you to all have a lovely night. Today is the 14th of October. Thank you very much for watching, whether you've watched it live, whether you've watched it later on. I'm John, this is Emps, and I'll be back at some point tomorrow, be it 5 or 5.30. And as always, if you come on these videos and you can share it into other groups, please share it because other people then can hear the message and they can make it up for the, they can make their own minds up for themselves as to whether or not we're a group who they may want to invest their time in. But thank you so much.